All right, so good morning once again to everyone that is here. Welcome to another class. So last week, we would have completed um, chapter 1.2. We're finished with input devices and what are the types and what are the devices that fall under those categories. Just a quick revision. Um, anyone remembers what are the two type of input devices? Manual input devices and direct data entry. Very good, very good. Manual data entry, manual input device and direct data entry device. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to randomly call some devices and you guys tell me if it is manual or if it is direct. So we're going to start with, um, we're going to start simple, keyboard. Manual. Manual. Yes, sir. Good. That's correct. That's manual. Um, sensor. Direct. Direct, sir. Two direct. direct. Three direct. Good. That is correct. Direct is the correct answer. Direct data entry. Good. Um, a document scanner. Direct. 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 A document. It's manual. Isn't it manual? Manual. Remember, we have two types of scanner, basically. So we have a document scanner. The document scanner is the manual input device because you're scanning a document. Now, the barcode scanner or the barcode reader, what is that? It reads different widths, like the black parts. Right. So would that be manual or direct? It's direct. Right. So that would be direct because remember that one is inputting a lot more data. It's inputting the item name, the manufacturer, um, the item code, and any other information the barcode would have. Remember, direct inputs um, a lot of data at once, whereas manual, you are putting in the data. All right. Um, what else do we have? Microphone. Manual. Got one manual. Anyone else? Manual. Manual. All right. So that's correct. All right. So it seems you guys have. Um, all right. So the last one, a touch screen. Is the touch screen manual or direct? Sorry, we're breaking up a second. Yeah, so I'm saying is the touch screen. Is the touch screen manual or direct? Manual. Manual. Why is it manual? Anyone want to try? Why is it manual? Because you have to use your finger. Right. Right. You have to use your finger to operate the device. Very good. Good. So you guys have the right ideas. You guys seems to be learning. I remember to go through this table here. This table, it basically summarizes everything you would have done in the, um, the chapter. Um, it summarizes what is the device, what category it falls under. So see we have manual input devices and we have all of the devices that falls under manual. And then we have direct data entry starting from here. And these are all the direct data entry devices. We have the application, what are they used for, and what are their advantage and disadvantage. Very important to remember. So um, remember these questions here, they're basically in a Google form. Well, you guys should have, all of you should have completed it by now on your Google Classroom. So today, we're going to be starting chapter 1.3. Does anyone have any questions or comments before we start though? No, sir. Right here, Chad and um, Summer are asking to be let in. To be let in. 
Oh, let me see. There are tools here, I'm sure. Oh. Yes, there is no. Yeah, so let's begin now. So today we're looking at output devices and we should have already learned by now in the very first chapter that the output devices get data out of the computer. So we're going to be looking at what are the different types of outputs and what are the different devices that we have as output devices. That's what we're going to be looking at in this chapter here. So, to get us started, um, the first two paragraphs there, give me a second, let me um, check, alright, so I'm just going to pick some out of one then. Alright, we're going to start from Raphael, Raphael could you read for us? To get process information out of a computer, you may need an output device. Output means to show, print or store the results of a process data. The most common types of output are soft copy. This is not permanent. It includes output from a computer monitor, audio from speakers, electrical signals, and output from one computer to another. Hard copy. This is also called permanent output, since it is printed for you to review anyway from the computer. Examples are printed reports and pictures. Very good. So, output, as the paragraph here mentions, it means to get processed data out of your computer, out of the device. Now. Um, when we had that homework, I think it was a homework or a quiz, some of you um, would have only said process data or some of you said output um, data or some of you said output information. It can be a combination of both. It can be output data, it could be output information. That's why there's the key word here, results, because it can be either depending on the type of device, depending on what is it being used for. But in most cases, like for example, your phone, your laptop that you're currently using, your phone that you're currently using, they get processed information. But in those examples, you're getting processed information. But in special cases, you might get processed data in special cases. So, when it comes to outputs, you are getting either processed information or processed data. Now, when it comes to output, we have two types of outputs. We have soft copy and we have hard copy. Now, it says here that soft copy is not permanent, so meaning it is temporary. And hard copy is permanent. Does anyone um, notice any similarities between these terms soft copy and hard copy with any other terms we looked at so far? Anyone notice any similarities? Okay. The term soft copy and hard copy. We looked at two other terms that are similar to them. Spelled similarly. Software and hardware. Right, that is it. Software and hardware. Now, when it comes to software, if you guys can remember, is software something that we can feel and touch? No, sir. No. It's not something we can feel and touch. Which one can we feel and touch? 
hardware. The hardware. The hardware. Very good. The hardware. Right. So, you guys can, uh, if anyone put the pieces together, you would notice that keyword hard and that keyword soft. So, in computer, if soft, it is basically something that is digital, something that you cannot see, something that is on the computer. It is basically inside of the computer, you can say. So, that's why it's called soft. So that's why it has that term soft. So software, soft copy. So soft copy output is something that is temporary. If the computer loses power, then you won't be able to see it. Whereas the hard copy, the keyword hard, basically meaning is something you can feel, something you can touch, something you can hold. That is permanent. So it doesn't matter if the computer is on, if the computer is off, you will get to see this type of output because it is permanent. So going back to the soft copy output, we have examples like what you see on your monitor. If you were to turn off your monitor or if you were to lose power, you won't be able to see anything anymore. If you stop playing music, you won't get any output anymore. If you were to lose electricity, no signals will be sending you would not be getting any soft copy output anymore. So, in those cases, they are temporary. It's something causing them to be in existence. Whereas the hard copy is something that is permanent. One of the main type of hard copy output is something that you print. So, all of those documents, papers, letters that you have, those are hard copy outputs. And you don't need your computer on because it's paper, it's physical. Whether your computer is on, whether your phone is on or off, doesn't matter. You can see and read those outputs. So the pictures that you print, the reports that you print, your assignment that you print, your homework that you print, those are all hard copy outputs. Are you guys following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, anyone with any question or comments? No, sir. All right, so those are the two types of outputs that you guys should remember, soft copy output and hard copy. So we're basically going to be looking at soft copy output first. And uh, one of those devices that gives us soft copy output is the display devices. Basically, any device that has a display is a soft copy output. So, first paragraph here, let's have um, Samir, could you read for us? From display devices? Yes. Computers usually display output on a screen or a monitor. Some monitors are separate and need to be plugged into the computer system unit. Others, such as laptops and mobile devices, have their screen integrated, integrated, integrated on the system unit and keyboard. Televisions can also be used as computer monitors with some additional connections. Other display devices include interactive whiteboards, are so called smart boards, used for, for teaching or presentations. These large touch sensitive plastic boards respond to input either directly by connections to a computer or through other devices such as a projector, tablet, or magnetic pen. Very good. So, a few of the display devices that we have. Well, one is the monitor. So, let's look at an example, just in case some of you may not know what a monitor looks like. Not all of us are fortunate to have a computer. So, this is what a monitor would look like. It would look similar to a television, but only thing you cannot connect um, your antenna to it. So you can't watch TV on your monitor. 
So it's, ma it's mainly used to connect to a computer so that you can get the output from your computer. Is anyone currently using um, a monitor with a desktop? Yes, sir. All right, good. So, other display devices are going to be on your laptop. So the screen that you have on your laptop, that is also a display device. How many of you currently use on a laptop? Me, sir. Me, sir. Good. So all of you have a display device on your laptop. And if you have a smartphone, if some of you are currently logged in with a smartphone, that also has a display device. What you're currently looking at is your display device. How many of you are using a phone? I am. Good. So that is your display device here. Now, another type of display device is your television. And some televisions can actually function as the monitor. So you can, uh, yes, tablets are included also. So some um, televisions, they allow you to connect to your computer and be able to work as a monitor. I actually use my television at home when I want to watch anime. I would put, I would connect my computer to the television and I would watch it on the TV. Anybody uses their, um, their TV as a display output for their laptop? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. yes, sir. We want to see things bigger, right? So we also have the interactive whiteboard or the smart board. This is important to remember. So for those of you who've never seen a smart board, this is what it looks like. IT Lab actually has one. It's basically, you can say it's like a large TV, but it's touch screen, so you can interact with it. So it's a, you can say it's a large touch screen tablet. That's basically a smart board, a large touch screen tablet. And you can interact with it as it's basically going to function like a computer. And uh, you interact with it so that you can teach, you can draw, and whatever else you want to do as you're teaching. So that is another display device. Um, it is used for teaching and presentation, as mentioned here. Um, we also have the projector. How many of you have a projector at home? I do, sir. Me. That says a lot. I'm not going to say what it says. So yes, this is what a projector looks like. So, may you to use your projector for? Sir, I would normally use it if we have, if we're like outside and we want to do like a movie night or something in the backyard. Please invite me for the next movie night. Okay, sir. So, this is what projectors would look like. Um, they're different types, they're different brands, and they're also a display device. They output on a screen so that um, you can see the contents. Well, it's, con it's being used a lot right now in school, so if you ever come to school, you will see them a lot in the classrooms. And, uh, well, yes, so those of you who are using a tablet, that also has a display device. As you can see here, that is used to um, output whatever you're going to see on the screen. Um, yeah, it mentions magnetic pen because that would help. For some of them, you would use a pen to interact with it. So the pen would be what? Would the pen be input or would it be output? Input, sir. Yeah, that sounds assured. Input. 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 That's that correct. Input. So, as you remember, with a pen, you are writing, you are putting in data. So that's input there. Good. Now the next two paragraphs. Any questions or comments before we move on to? No 
questions. All right, Sarah, can you read the next two paragraphs for us? The most common types of display device include LCD, liquid crystal display, flat screens, and LED, LED um, light emitting diode. Screens on handheld devices and laptops. A monitor contains a matrix or array of bright dots of green, red, green, and, and blue, known as RGB. These can be blended to display millions of colors. Mapping the location and color information of each bit of data creates a computer image. This is known as a bitmap or BMP. The bitmap image seen on a monitor is made up of thousands of pixels. Pixel stands for picture, PIX, element. Features of a computer screen include its size and resolution. Good. So, paragraph at the top mentions the most common types of display that you would have is the LCD display, the liquid crystal display, and the LED display, the light emitting diode display. Have any of you ever heard these terms before? I think so. Yes, sir. Well, if you're interested in um, phones, you might hear about these um, these displays. Because if you really like um, iPhone, you would know that iPhone are using LCD display. And if you really like um, Samsung phones, you would know that they use display and so on. But these are the most common types of display. Even your television. Your television, your um, your um, your smartphone, your tablet, they use these kinds of technology, these types of display. So if you were to search for um, LCD display, I'm looking more for the um. LCD display. I wanted more of a. Okay, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So, but the LCD display, it actually has, if you notice the term here, liquid crystal, it actually has actual liquid inside of it, liquid crystals inside of it. And. Uh, light passes through those liquid crystals and that is how you see the different colors on your screen whereas the um the light emitting diode it's just leds um or you can say small light bulbs that are shining the light for you to get a display on the screen now, that's a bit um that's some technical knowledge so it's not important for you to um know that but if you understand why that said congratulations um but yeah what i want you guys to do is to this is one of your homework to search for the different types of displays that we have that are currently being used so your homework is to search for the different types of displays so what are the different types of displays that phones would use, um, TVs would use? They would basically use similar technology. So it's just finding what are the other versions. For example, um, I'm going to give you guys one example. There's a display called the AMOLED display. I'm sure you guys heard about this one. Any, any one of you? Yes, sir. Right. That's the one your phone has. So those of you who have a, um, a Samsung phone, it has a type of display called the AMOLED. And there's also the OLED and other types of display. So your homework 
is to learn about what are the other types of displays. Now, how do these displays work? They basically all have the, uh, um, how should I put it, the same functionality when it comes to you seeing something on the screen. They have what is called a matrix of dots that make up the screen. So whatever display you look at, you would always see a combination of red, green, and blue. Any of you ever looked at the display and, and saw that? Yes, sir. Right. If you, if for those of you who have a television, if you put your eye very close to the television, you would actually see that red, green, and blue. Um, if you actually um, you, on your phone right now, and I'm telling you to do it, but if, you, if you're willing to try it, if you put a single drop of water on your display, you would actually see that red, green, and blue. So if, if you guys are willing to try that, just put a single drop of water on your, um, your phone display or your tablet display, if you're willing to take that risk, and you would actually see that combination of red, green, and blue makes up your display sir i can see it it's not really you have to pay like a lot of attention to it right but it's actually there um these what actually happens is that they try to pack as much as possible together so the more they try to pack it together the more they try to put into the display the smaller it will become and thus the harder to see but what happens is that when you put a drop of water it magnifies it so that's why you're able to see it a lot clearer but nevertheless all of these displays that's basically how they work they combine these three colors red green and blue to make the variety of colors that you see on the screen so each um so that's why it's called a bitmap image because each one of those bits make up the entire image that you're seeing on the screen each functions as basically one part of the image that's being created on the screen now one of those colors one of those red green or blue is called a pixel a pixel is the smallest um, part of your display so if you were to look at the display, all of these red, greens, and blue that you see in here, a single color here, that is a pixel. That's what we call a pixel. Now, um, actually don't quote me on that. I have to check to see if it's a combination of the three colors or if it's um, one individual color. I'll check that and I'll let you guys know but the pixel refers to the those elements that come together to make up your display and that is how you get your screen size that's how you get your resolution for your display they measure those pixels to get the size the resolution and so on any questions or comments before we move on No, sir. Are you guys following everything? Somebody must yes, be sir. some sort of question. Yes, sir. Can be, I'm sure I'm not explaining everything so well that you guys are understanding everything. Um, I'm trying to get the answer. One RGB. Okay, so it says that the um the three the three colors make up the pixel. Yeah, because the three would combine together to make the um that piece of data. So that has to be the um the pixel. So we have some display devices here in figure 1.10.
we have your tablet, we have your phone, we have your laptop, and so on. Now, when it comes to your screen, we have certain features that we need to remember about the screen. We need to remember what is the size of the screen, how do we calculate the size, how do we calculate the resolution, what is the color, and other aspects of it. So we're going to look at the first two, size and resolution. And we're going to have Sirica. Can you read for us? Size. This is the dimension of the screen which shows the output. Common desktop. Desktop screens are from 14 inches to 19 inches, measured diagonally. Larger sizes are now available. Resolution. This determines how clear and detailed the output, output on the screen can be. Pictures on the screen are made up of tiny dots. One dot equal one picture. The more pictures are in, the clearer and the more detailed the graphic. Great. So, the first feature of your computer screen or any display is its size. How do we measure the size of a display? Important to remember, the size of a display is always measured diagonally. Does anyone know what is diagonal? Slanted. Slanted. Anyone else? So more specifically, what would you say? The horizontal vertical axis. Okay, so how to measure the um, display? So diagonal would be the top left to the bottom right. Are you guys hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I don't know how my internet. I don't know how my internet is now working, and yet you're hearing me. That's some magic going on here. Come on, we can do it. I just All right, can you guys still hear me? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. All right, so, um, I'm not sure why Google is not working, and yet you guys can still hear me. But you guys can see my cursor on the screen moving? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So from the top left here to the top, the top left corner here, of the corner of the, my screen here, to all the way to the bottom right, where you see in this one in the notification area, that is how you measure a display. So whether it's your tablet, whether it's your laptop, whether it's your phone, you take a ruler and you put it diagonally across the screen in that um, position and that is how you measure your display. So, any of you ever, um, did you guys know that though? That's how you measure a screen? No, sir. No? So any of you ever had like, um, say for instance, you had a 32 inch TV or a 40 inch TV and you try to measure it and it didn't match up with the 32 or the 40, or the 40 inch? Yes, sir. Right. So now if you go and measure it now and you measure it diagonally, well, I'm sure you measured horizontally, right? 
Yes, sir. Right, so if you go and actually measure it diagonally now, you can see it actually matches up to what they told you. If it's a 32 inch or a 40 inch, or if you have a 60 inch at home, you can see it actually matches up to that size now. Now, when it comes to the resolution now, your resolution determines how clear and detailed your display will be. That's important to remember. Your resolution determines how clear and detailed your display will be. So, have any of you ever seen or used one of those old Big Back TV? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, did you guys um, used to see the pixel on it? Yeah. Yes, yes sir. sir. Right. You could stand up from a distance and you would, and you would still see the pixels on one of those CRT television. So, did it have a good quality? No, sir. No, it didn't have any good quality. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it might have good quality, but generally the quality wasn't that good. But the television that you're using now, the flat screen television, or the, um, you, the, the display on your phone, or on your laptop, is the quality better? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot better, right? Yes. yes, sir. Right. And do you see the pixels on those devices? No, no sir. sir. No. You actually don't see them. You got you to strain yourself to actually see them, or to use a magnifier in order to see them, but they're there, but as that, it's so much of them that you actually don't see them. So that's basically what resolution is. They take those pixels, the combination of the red, green, and blue, and they try to put as much together as close as possible. So the more of them together basically means the higher the resolution. And the higher the resolution, it means the higher the quality. For example, I'm sure you guys would have heard about um, resolutions like 12, no, not 12, um, maybe 1080 by 720, something like that. Or maybe uh, 1020 by... 720. You guys ever saw figures like that? Yeah, I think so. If you, um, let me see, how would you guys know? If you ever connect your um, computer to your TV, it would actually show up. And, um, but I guess in order for the rest of you to see, you would have to check the specifications. Maybe Google was the um, resolution. Oh, actually, um, but then I don't want to change the display. YouTube usually has it. Yeah, if you, if you go in settings, if you actually go in settings on your phone, it, um, if you have a Samsung phone that can change the um, display size, you will see those um, those numbers. Some phones allow you to change the, um, the screen resolution and you will see those numbers. Well, basically those numbers represent the pixels. So what this is basically saying is that the hundred, the thousand and eighty, mean a thousand and eighty pixels, and the seven twenty means a hundred and seventy pixels. So one of them is going to be diagonal, um, horizontal, and one of them is going to be vertical. So for example, this might be vertical, and this one might be horizontal. So it's basically saying that 720 pixels are going across and 100 and 1080 pixels are going up and down that's basically what it's saying there so when you see higher numbers when you see higher numbers maybe like something like about 2080 by 4060 that is a lot more pixels than a simple 1080. Sorry. Yeah, let's go on. You're breaking up, sir. What last did you guys hear? Sir, you 
I'm breaking up. Um. Drops. Tell me if you guys can hear me better now. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you for that. Um, the computer switched Wi-Fi for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, um, the Saints Wi-Fi. Um, it's not healthy. So, what I'm basically saying is that, um, when it comes to resolution those are the numbers you'll see numbers like that and they determine how many pixels you have on the display so the higher the number it means the higher the pixels thus higher the resolution you guys clear on that yes sir right higher the number higher the pixel higher the resolution and once the resolution is high, it means you're getting a more clearer display. All right, so moving on. So we have color, cursor, and scrolling. So let's have um, Theo, can you read for us? Color. The number of colors displayed can be, can vary from 16 to 256 to 64,000 to 16.7 million. The more colors, the smoother the graphic appears, especially photo. Cursor or pointer. The cursor is a symbol that shows where you are working on the screen. It may appear as I for text and R O for the most pointy location. Scrolling. This allows the text or graphic to be moved up, to be moved or up or down, or brought into view on the screen. Very good. So the third feature, remember we're looking at features of your display. So we looked at the size, we look at the resolution, now we're looking at color. Each display has a certain amount of color that it can display. Um, how many colors do you guys know about? If I was to tell you guys to count how many colors you know, what number would you give me? Sir, I don't know an exact number because I know a lot of colors. Give me an estimate. Exactly. Right there. Ten colors. So if we count red, one, orange, two, green, three, and uh, we think of any other color, we might barely think about 20, 30 different colors. And because uh, we might not know the different variation in colors, because there's baby pink and then there's. Um, maybe pink and then feather gray and what sort of different names. So the point I'm trying to get at is that there are actually a lot of colors. There's a lot of variations in colors and our display can only show a certain amount of those colors. So some can only show 16, 16 different colors. Some could only show 256 colors, whereas some could show 6 to 4,000, all the way up to 16 million different colors displays can show. For example, did you guys know that um, in the past displays were actually black and white? Yes, sir. Right. They were black and white. Did they have any color? So those had no colors, but slowly, they started adding in colors. So they were started off maybe with a few colors, maybe that's 16 colors, and then they went up to 256 colors, and so on. So displays, that is another feature that they have. They show how much colors um, they have. They're designed to display a certain amount of color. Now, 
Another aspect of display is have a cursor or a pointer on the screen so that you can know where you are working from. The cursor, as all of you that are using computers, a cursor, as you see on the screen here, it allows us to point to where we are working. So if I want to click on the tab at the top here, I'm using my cursor. If I want to click on the other tab, I'm using my cursor. If I want to click on the menu, I'm using my cursor in order to do that. If you want to type in a document, you would use your cursor to say basically where you want to type. So that is another feature of your screen. Your screen must have somewhere to indicate where you are working. And that cursor is what helps you. And the last feature of your screen is scrolling. Scrolling allows you to move across the screen. Now, like for instance, how I'm zoomed in right now, I cannot see everything on my screen. So just like any one of you, you would have to scroll. You'd have to scroll up and down. You would have to scroll left and right because not everything would fit on the screen. Even if I zoom out, I cannot see everything. So I have to go in to a certain distance to be able to read, to be able to see. And then at the same time, I still cannot see what's at the top, what's at the bottom. So I have to scroll. And that is where the scroll bars come into play. We have the uh, vertical scroll bar, which takes us up and down. And then we also have the horizontal scroll bar, which takes us left and right so those are the five features of your display um the size of the display the resolution the color the cursor or the pointer and the ability to scroll the display are you guys following yes sir anyone with any questions or comments Um, excuse me, sir, for the color, is there a way we can know the amount of colors that can be shown in the phone or they don't tell us that? They actually do. And if my internet was actually working properly, the show is actually working. The last thing we were looking at, yeah, display size. Yeah, so, so this was the last thing we were trying to Google. So notice it's horizontal. So from the... Uh, either the top left to the bottom right or top right to bottom left diagonal and that's how you measure a display any display it's the same way um, we're talking about color so if you search for any device specification for example Samsung Note 20 Ultra and you go to a site that can give you the specifications of the device um, if you notice here they would tell you the type of display this one is a dynamic AMOLED display so this is the type of display um, this is a size 6.9 inches across diagonal this is the resolution I'm talking about here notice we have resolution 1440 yes. by 3080 3088 pixels and the amount of color now um, I don't think this one here I think because most of these um, are 8 bit colors and that's why they don't show it So you actually have to go and search for that directly. Um, so how many colors can the Samsung Note 20 Ultra display? Three colors. I... Samsung 
single twenty. Um, I suppose the first is to be on the stone that I'm searching for. Um, you're giving me the wrong answer. I'll check it and let you know. Oops. Yes, sir. I went and I um I checked it from my own phone and they they have everything here. How many colors? Yes, sir. They have. Like, they have everything, colors, display, and everything. I just have to go through it. What website are you using? No, sir, I was, I'm using an Apple website. Okay. Well, I guess they would have the um, specification. Does it say 8-bit color? No, sir. Or it does give you the, does give you the number? Alright, so I didn't really want to touch on our printed devices as yet. As there's a whole other topic there, and we're almost at lunch. So if you guys have any other additional questions, we can take them. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Did you see this number here, Nia? No, sir. What did you see? How much is yours have? Give me a second, sir. Alright, so if the rest of you do not have any questions, um, so in the review of what we looked at today, today we looked at what is output once again. Output 
means to get data out to the computer. It means to show, print, or store results. Remember, it could be either process data or process information, either one. But in most cases, when you are using a device, it is going to be process information. We have two types of output, soft copy and hard copy. Soft copy is temporary, such as your computer monitor, sound, and so on, and electrical signal, whereas hard copy is permanent, something that you print and you can see later on. Um, the soft copy device we looked at is the display devices. Remember your homework is to look for the other types of display devices. Remember what is a pixel, remember what is a smart board, and then lastly we looked at what are the features of a computer screen. What is the size, what is the resolution, what is the color, the cursor, and scrolling. Alright, so if you guys don't have any other questions or any comments or anything, we shall end here for today.